Are you looking for a 3D printer that can do more? How about printing two colors at once, or even two materials at once, or even two prints side by side? Today we test the IDEX Soval SV04. One type of 3D printer I've never tested is an IDEX, which means independent dual extruders. I've had some requests to cover these, so here we are reviewing the SV04 from Soval. This is not a perfect machine, but as you'll see, it does have a lot going for it. We'll get started by looking at the price and the specs. The Soval SV04 is a 3D printer that seemingly is only available from their official website. It has a regular price of 600 US dollars, but you can regularly get it significantly cheaper than that. What's welcome is that it can ship from multiple locations around the world, However, currently there's a delay on some of those. The big thing here is that the SV04 is an IDEX 3D printer. That means it has independent dual extruders. We can print with either of the extruders in isolation, both at once, two prints at once mirrored, or two prints at the same time duplicated. Apart from this, the form factor is an i3 bed slinger with the same build volume as other large printers such as a CR10. We'll see these features in detail during the video, but of note, we have an all-metal hot end, auto bed leveling, silent stepper motor drivers, dual filament runout protection, a magnetic removable flex plate bed, dual Z axis with self leveling, power off protection, and a belt T-Jenner. And on paper, that is a lot of functionality for the money. This printer was provided free of charge by Soval after they agreed to my review policy, which is available on my website. Let's jump straight in with the unboxing and initial setup. Like most 3D printers, this one arrived in a large cardboard box with foam packaging and it had several main areas that need to bolt together. The only surprise was the open blade found as you see it here under the lid. To assist with assembly, we have a pretty decent instruction manual. It features clear labelled illustrations as well as the specs of the printer and it made putting the machine together pretty trivial. Elsewhere in the manual, we have instructions for how the interface works, as well as instructions for the basic operations of the printer, such as loading filament and using the provided slicer. Overall, this gets a tick from me. Also included are the usual tools, as well as two spare nozzles and some PTFE tube. On the SD card, we have a range of pre-sliced G-code. We've got a digital copy of our manual, as well as guides for other specific functions. We have the Solval branded Cura, which we'll look at in detail shortly, some more files for calibrating the offset of the dual extruders, some STLs for us to slice ourselves, and what is becoming a welcome trend, some instructional videos to help the user in getting started. Back on the printer, we can peel off the protective plastic from the touchscreen and power it up for the first time. Unfortunately, this is another printer with silent stepper motor drivers, but has loud fans that are continuously running. On to the initial setup, and we start by calculating the Z offset by putting a piece of paper underneath the nozzle and then using the touchscreen to adjust until it's just touching. We then have an assisted bed leveling procedure that moves the nozzle to different positions and we use the knobs on the underside of the bed to make sure the bed is fairly even. We now instruct the printer to probe a 4x4 ABL grid of the bed. This is stored to EEPROM and retained after homing, which means it's automatically applied for each print. We can also run the auto Z align function to make sure that the gantry is horizontal. Loading filament is quite straightforward. We have a nice set of controls on the touchscreen for heating either nozzle or the bed independently. This includes presets or manually typing in your desired temperature. Once the nozzle is up to temp, the E3D Titan clone extruders are easy to use. They're direct drive, so we simply squeeze the lever and then push the filament in. If you try to print dual extrusion without calibration, you'll find that the two colours don't really line up. So it's good that there's a proper process for tuning this. The first thing we do is get the second nozzle sitting the right height. And to do that, we have a simple vertical adjustment knob, which we twist until we have the right amount of squish between the nozzle and a piece of paper. We then have a pre-sliced file on the SD card for adjusting the offset of the right extruder. And as you can see here, the two combs for the x-axis do not line up at all. There's a video provided on the SD card that walks you step by step how to interpret your results and how to make adjustments. We again use the touch screen to input the correct offset, save it to the EEPROM, and we can run the test print once again. 
As you can see on my follow-up, the X and Y combs are aligned quite well. With the base calibration complete, I chose to verify the printer was working by making a simple pre-sliced 20mm cube from the SD card, and apart from me having my Z offset a little bit close, which made the cube hard to remove, everything turned out great. Being an IDEX, this printer is capable of working in various modes. Let's have a closer look at this and how it relates to the provided slicer. Firstly, the mode is switched from the main menu, and we have single extruder mode for either the left or right, dual mode for using both at once, think a multi-color or multi-material print, duplicate mode, which will let you print two objects on one half of the bed at a time, and as you can see from the movement of the two extruders, the shape will be copied identically. Finally, we have the similar mirror mode, which again lets you produce two objects at once using half of the build plate each. And while the bed is shared, which means the Y movements match exactly, we can see that the X movements are reversed and therefore the printed objects are mirrored. So now to the slicer, which is called Sovol 3D Cura, and it's simply a skinned version of Cura, just like Reality do. We use the drop down to select which mode that we want to print with. And for the dual and single modes, we have access to the entire build plate. However, once we pick copy or mirror mode, the build plate will shrink because obviously we can only use one half at a time. When we're using copy or mirror mode, we only need to place the object once and the printer does the rest. I spent a bit of time looking through these various profiles, trying to find out the differences. The most obvious is that the mode you have selected is prepended to the G-code file name to remind you of what mode to select back on the printer. Beyond that, the changes in the output of the G-code is superficial, such as specifying which nozzle should heat up. The only other changes are the object placement, which is as you would expect for single and dual mode, but automatically offset to the left for copy and mirror mode to create the space required on the right hand side. In terms of setting up for a dual extrusion print job, we import both models, select our materials from up the top, by default it will be PLA, but if you're doing multi-material, you can select instead what you want up the top. You can then click on each object and assign the extruder on the side. Here I'm setting up the tire to be printed from TPU. We hold shift, click both models, right click, and then merge. At this stage, we can still change things like temperatures for either side. And once we're happy, we can slice, and that will set up a dual color or dual material print. Hopefully that lets you understand how this machine works with its various modes. So let's move on to my test prints. I actually got off to a bad start because the left hand extruder loom kept on getting caught, jamming and causing layer shifts. Fortunately, there was a pre-made solution by Mitchell Shung on Thingiverse. I printed a set on another machine, bolted them to the printer and fortunately problem solved from that point forward. This problem probably doesn't affect every one of these printers, but it certainly did mine. Besides the simple cube we saw earlier, my first print was a dual color blink fox found on the SD card. Unfortunately, half a day in, we had a storm, then a blackout, and the power was cut to the print. I did try to resume it with the power up protection, but the nozzle collided with the model, causing a layer shift, and since it was taking so long, I abandoned the print. It's hard to tell, but I think it was going okay, and the colors were aligned. Looking for something quicker to print, I switched to this low poly squirtle from Floalistic. It turned out pretty well, apart from a persistent issue I had, stringing and blobs left behind from the idle extruder returning to the model. At least they're only loosely attached. To better utilize the filament colors I was using, I switched to these low poly toys. The model seemed to print okay, but when I was trying to assemble it, I realized the layer adhesion was quite poor, which I put down to too low a temperature in the slicer. On to the next test, and my son wants to be Boba Fett, but he doesn't have a blaster. Fortunately, Stormtrooper Guy has provided a nice Django Fett blaster. This is printed in many pieces, and I printed the silver ones on the left-hand extruder and the gold ones separately on the right extruder. Some of the pieces are quite tall and skinny, and I'm pleased to say the bed had sufficient grip. Again, they printed quite nicely apart from the minimal stringing, but I cleaned that up assembled the blaster and I hope you agree, the final result is quite nice. It has nice smooth surfaces and nice details. Little Boba was certainly happy to have his dad's blaster. How about something really decorative, this Sisu the Dragon model by Yuka Seppinen. I picked some highly glossy colour changing filament and we have the same trend as the other prints. You would describe almost everything about this print as high quality apart from the fine stringing. Next up, a faceted vase. Overall this one looks good, 
particularly the way the light captures the different facets, but there must have been some type of micro stuttering as there's artifacts here that weren't present in any of the other prints. I couldn't perceive anything at the time, so this one's a bit of a mystery. For something functional, I attempted this Revo nozzle tray by ZeroFlow. I attempted to produce this in ASA using the inbuilt Cura settings, which means a hotbed of 80 degrees. However, it wasn't long until it started to peel off the bed. I reprinted with the bed at 100, but I got the same result. Conclusion, this bed doesn't work well with ASA. I re-sliced and reprinted in black PETG, with again the bed set to 80 and got a much better result. This is one of the cleanest prints that I got in terms of not needing post-processing, and dimensionally, it was spot on as well. To try printing in TPU, I picked these battery caps and only adjusting the temperatures, which means no reduction in speed, the extruder was able to grip this filament without any problems and produce a nice result, of course with the usual stringing. The model used for the mirror and duplicate mode test was this little ghost. When printed in duplicate mode, as you might expect, they are the same from left to right, including the stringing, and when printed in mirror mode, again no surprises, the final parts are mirrored, the most obvious place to spot this is by looking at the eyes. These side-by-side -side printing modes are very useful. I finished with more dual extrusion printing, starting with this Easter Island Moai, and following the same pattern, it looks quite reasonable, apart from the unchecked oozing when the extruders switch. To try something more functional, I modelled up this wheel and tyre, intended to be printed with two different materials. These were black 95A TPU for the tyre, and gold PLA for the rim and I'm pleased to say this dual material approach worked quite well. There's the usual unfortunate stringing on the PLA, but this is a true multi-material print, with soft rubber on the outside and firm plastic on the interior. There's a level of functionality here not possible with other printers. An alternate example of this is this Earth Dragon. For this one, I set up the support material to be printed from the right extruder and loaded up some dissolvable PVA. This is my first time using this type of filament, but during the print, everything seemed to be going well. Eventually, the PVA extruder jammed partway through, but the most important part was in place, support for the underside of the belly. Again, we have the usual stringing and blobs, but fortunately, these are quite easy to remove. I trimmed off the parts of the PVA that I didn't think would risk damaging the legs, and then popped it in a bowl with some 50 degree water. I expected that I'd have to wait a long time for the PVA to dissolve, but after a few minutes it became soft enough that I could peel it easily away from the model. A few minutes later and the last remnants were soft enough to wash off, and after the final cleanup of the stringing and oozing, we end up with quite a nice print, particularly on the underside where the dissolvable support has left a really nice surface. Another print that works a lot better on an IDEX 3D printer. I know what you're probably thinking, it can print okay but only after cleaning up stringing and blemishes. Well, in my opinion, it's the slicer profile holding the machine back, and here's my proof. During my testing, I found that my models consistently had stringing, poor layer adhesion from too low a nozzle temperature, and I also found the default printing speed agonizingly slow. I think the provided Cura profile just hasn't had enough tuning. There's some sloppy parts, such as parts of the start G code where the command is repeated, and questionable choices such as the default having a large amount of Z-hop, which probably contributed to the stringing. I did some testing in Super Slicer, sifting through the Cura directories to retrieve this SDL, just so I'd have a boundary for where to place objects in mirror and copy mode, and I found that despite raising the temperature and print speed, the stringing was 90% gone with the generic profile. I then printed a 3D Benchy without any further tuning, and found that it was the cleanest print that I had out of any of those from PLA. The problem is not the printer, but instead the Cura profile. So despite some of the stringing on these test prints, I still give this machine a tick in terms of print quality. So what do I think about the rest of it? Overall, I feel this has been a very capable 3D printer. The unboxing and assembly was quite straightforward. Normally I don't love these Creality style touchscreens, but I have to acknowledge that the most important functions that you need are easy to access and easily understood. The direct drive extruders make loading and unloading filament a simple task, and other features such as auto bird leveling need to be set up only once and then do their job quietly in the background, again making the machine more reliable to use. There's some nice features around the printer, such as these covers for the V-slot extrusion to tidy up the wiring, dual Z control with each lead screw having anti-backlash nuts, easy to access and use tensioning knobs for all of the belts, 
these filament guidance bearings that I thought would annoy me but actually weren't that big a deal at all. And these handy purge buckets underneath the idle place for each extruder which collect the majority of filament that seeps out during a dual extrusion job. There's no doubt this machine is capable of some truly beautiful prints. But as reviewed, this is only possible after cleanup because the standard slicing profile is really not that great. However, anyone with this printer can feel confident that a good slicer profile will soon become available from community groups, which will provide a free and instant boost to print quality. There are some other downsides besides the print profile, but relative to this, I consider them minor. For instance, the power supply is a generic model, and that means it has a noisy fan that's constantly on, even when you're not printing. The SVO4 actually uses a Creality mainboard, and that means the TMC steppers are connected in legacy mode. They're still silent, but we don't get to use any of the smart features, such as adjusting the current with G-code. At one point, I was having repeated layer shifts, and this really confused me. Can you spot the reason? The part cooling fan had tilted down and was colliding with the model. An easy fix, but not perfect. Another imperfect aspect was the filament runout detection, which I tested for the right-hand extruder. When the right-hand extruder went to park on the left-hand side, it just collided with the other extruder, and this caused a small layer shift in the final object. This is minor because only one number needs adjusting in the firmware. Speaking of the firmware, it is based on Marlin but one of the strange Creality branches. The firmware for the touchscreen as well as the mainboard is currently available on the Sobol website. It's only a compiled binary rather than the source, but I've asked politely and they've sent me the Marlin source and this should appear on the website any day now. Having used this printer extensively for a few months, I'm left with three key thoughts. Firstly, this is a capable printer, but it's hindered by the slicing profile. However, slicing profiles are free to fix. IDEX 3D printers offer fantastic capabilities without purge blocks or overt complexity, like some other multi-extrusion solutions that I've tested. And while not perfect compared to the last printer that I tested of this size, the CR10 Smart, this is immensely better. If I had the choice between something like this or a normal single extrusion machine of similar price, well, I think it's a no-brainer. That's what I think, but what about you? Leave your opinion in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.